Here in America, there are, of course, the haves and the have-nots. Those that have the resources and those that do not. And I'm sure you realize that, and even in your own day-to-day -day circumstances, as you compare yourself uh, to others. Um, maybe you're middle class and you compare yourselves to the upper class. And maybe if you're in, a, in the lower class, the socioeconomic class, that you're looking up to the middle class and seeing what they have and, and you do not. Um, but this became super apparent to me uh, about two years ago when I spent some time, two weeks, in South Africa. I mean, South Africa is still a country that's being ravaged from the, the horrors, um, the injustices of apartheid. And while I was there, there the, the haves and the have-nots were extremely apparent. You could be walking down one side of the street, and, and to the right you would have brick homes, homes that look like much like, like homes here in America that have windows and, and doors and obviously have utilities hooked up to them. Um, they were well taken care of. And then on the other side of the street, literally the other side of the street, there were miles and miles and miles, as far as the eye could see, sad, sadly enough, of shacks. Uh, they were constructed of corrugated metal, um, scrap pieces that they found in the garbage, pieces of plywood, uh, whatever was available, uh, scraps that they could to make um, a one-room shack uh, for their family to live in. So literally looking from side to side of the street, you could see the haves and the have-nots, those that were living well and those that were not living so well and suffering. Which brings us to today's question. What does it mean to live well? What does it mean to live well? Let's take a look at the scripture today. This comes from 1 John chapter 3, 17 through 18. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. So what does it mean to live well? This is the New Living Translation, and in other translations they use material goods or the world's possessions, but it means the same thing, to live well. It's the have or the have-nots. Another scripture that comes to mind is Luke 12, the parable of the rich fool, right? It was when Jesus was telling this about a person, a, a farmer having all these possessions. He had an abundant crop that year and he didn't know what to do with them. So what did he decide to do, which made him foolish, was to build bigger barns. Look at how God has blessed me. I am so great. Let's build bigger barns. Let's build a bigger shed, a bigger garage, a bigger home to put all our stuff in. <laughs> and, the, and the fool even says in the parable, uh, let me drink and eat and be merry. You see, the haves in this are, are celebrating because they have so much and it never crossed this foolish person's mind that others don't have. Maybe I should share this crop, this abundant crop, like Joseph did in Egypt, right? When he was um, in exile there and when was the Pharaoh's secondhand man, he uh, was storing his crops away, but then he shared them. But that sharing never crossed this person's mind, and that's what made him foolish. So what do we do about the haves and the have-nots? And if you're watching this, you are more than likely probably in that category of the haves. Myself included, I like to eat sushi occasionally, once a week or twice a week, but sushi is quite expensive. So how, how what, what do I do with that? How am I eating a sushi dinner when someone else struggles to eat a ham sandwich? What do I do with that? Does that mean that I have to forsake sushi or, or you have to give up something because others do not? Do we make reasons why others uh, aren't worthy of it or that they deserve to be suffering or they got themselves in that situation and let them work on it themselves? That's not what Jesus says. Jesus says, if we are living well, if we are having enough to survive, if we have possessions and we are being taken care of, then how can we see another brother or, or sister in suffering and let them be? Maybe it is giving up that sushi dinner for, for one evening. Maybe it's skipping the expensive drive through coffee once a week or twice a week, or maybe even for a full month and giving that money to charity. Whatever it may be, a little sacrifice on our part for a few dollars and we can contribute it to the church or, or, or to the mission fund or the Christmas miracle offering, that money pooled together with others suddenly becomes that miracle, that great 
offering, when we say we don't have enough or we only have a little bit to offer, when we pull our resources together, everyone's little bit, everyone's sacrifice and, and offering that we give to God is good enough. And it makes the world of a difference to those that do not have. Friends, Christ showed us his love by his actions, not only by his words, but his actions as well. He cared for those that were suffering and we are called to do the same. I hope this message finds you well. Just a few days before Christmas, I'm wishing you and yours a very Merry Christmas. I hope you are are healthy during this time. And if you are not, please get rest. And I pray for your healing. And always may God be with you until we meet again.